Not too many, the characters of a movie are the single most important part. I mean, what good is a thrilling plot, spectacular visual effects, or heart racing music if you don't give a hoot about the people on screen? A good character is an audience's way into a film, their avatar in the fight, the one that they either want to see get the big victory or get utterly obliterated. But building characters isn't such an easy job, especially not within the constraints of a two hour film. And this might explain why some characters in huge movies can feel a little incomplete. But as it turns out, they're not actually all incomplete, some have just been lightly shaved. Because after trawling through the editing room trash can, we've pulled out 10 bits of deleted footage that would have added whole new layers to the backstories of some of cinema's most famous characters. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 deleted scenes that explain movie characters' backstories. Number 10. Andy Dawn of the Dead An often overlooked but essential part of Zack Snyder's 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead is Andy. As a gun store owner, Andy is trapped in the same mall as the other survivors. He exchanges distance messages with the group via whiteboards and builds up enough goodwill with them that they will try to take him with them when they leave. But spoiler alert, it doesn't end well. Andy ends up being bitten by a zombie and killed by the very people who were once trying to save him. It's a tragic ending for the local businessman, but it would have been even better and even more heartbreaking had we gotten to know him a little bit better. But the DVD release of Dawn of the Dead actually contained deleted video diary scenes from Andy's point of view. In them, he explains more about his predicament, but what's more telling is the footage that Andy has taped over. Brief glimpses of the tape's original content show Andy interacting with a woman and a young girl. Though this is never explained explicitly, it's heavily implied that this is his family. This would have added way more humanity to Andy's character and made it even more tragic when he lost his life. Number 9. Billy Bean – Moneyball now, Moneyball combines two of America's greatest pastimes, baseball and maths. Or should that be math if it's American? Here, Brad Pitt plays Billy Bean, manager of the Oakland Athletics. The team is in a financial pit, so Bean uses an experimental form of mathematical analysis to scout out the best players for the lowest price. It sounds really boring, but it's actually not. Billy is presented as down on his luck, still recovering from a divorce. However, eagle-eyed viewers may notice that he's seen wearing a wedding ring throughout the movie. Now, this means two things. One, yes, you have way too much time on your hands, and two, Bean is still definitely hung up on his ex-wife, right? Well, wrong, because in a deleted scene, we find out that Billy actually got hitched a second time to a woman played by Catherine Morris. Who was this woman called? No idea. Morris's Wikipedia page simply lists the role as Billy Bean's wife. Morris's inclusion in the film might have added an extra edge to Bean's character, showing that he had moved on from his first marriage. Instead, audiences were left feeling sorry for Billy as they thought that he was just enamored with his ex. Number 8. Ronaldo Hannibal Now, the 2001 movie Hannibal serves as a decent, if rather unnecessary, sequel to Silence of the Lambs. Here, Anthony Hopkins is back as Hannibal Lecter, whilst Clarice Starling magically transforms from Jodie Foster to Julianne Moore. Maybe she's the one wearing the skin this time around. Another new addition to the fold is Chief Inspector Ronaldo, a police officer working in Florence, Italy. Ronaldo joins the hunt for Hannibal after learning of the significant bounty placed on his head. But what the film left out was what Ronaldo was doing before he he became embroiled in Lecter's web. Through deleted conversations with the killer, we find out that the inspector was previously assigned to catch the serial murderer known as Il Monstro. This is mentioned fleetingly in the film itself, but never becomes important. Had this subplot stayed in the movie, we might have found out that Ronaldo has a less than stellar record when it comes to dealing with mass murderers. This would have only added to the tension when he faced Hannibal down and made his death at Lecter's hands even more tragically obvious. Poor guy, he should have asked for traffic duty instead, right? Number 7. Nala, The Lion King So Nala, as we all know, is Simba's childhood friend and eventual love interest in Disney's The Lion King. After his dad takes a big old tumble into some wildebeest, Simba is forced to flee Pride Rock, opening the door for his evil uncle Scar to become king. After mucking about with a mere cat and a warthog for several years instead of, you know, actually saving his family, Simba's past catches up with him in the form of Nala. The lioness informs the prince of what Scar has done to his beloved homeland, eventually leading to his return. But what was she doing? doing in the middle of the jungle. In a scene that only made it to the storyboarding stage, Scar decides that he is missing a queen to rule by his side. Nala walks in moments later, in a moment that would have been comical had it not been so utterly sinister. The tyrant propositions the young lioness only to be sternly rejected. He snaps and banishes Nala from his kingdom for daring to defy his rule. So there we have it, she wasn't just in the jungle by chance, she was exiled as well. Number 6. Harry Waters in Bruges 
In Bruges is a great film about very terrible people. When the heroes of the story, and I use that term very loosely, are contract killers, you know that you're in for a wild ride. Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson play the two hitman Ray and Ken, who were hired by the unhinged comedic genius that is Ray Fiennes' Harry Waters. A foul-mouthed gangster with a cockney accent so aggressive it should well be muzzled, Harry orders his employees to hide out in the titular city before travelling there himself to tie up loose ends. In a flashback scene cut from the theatrical release, we see a young Harry comforting Ken on the night of his wife's murder. After being told what happened, Harry goes to the police station to deal with the detective who led to the death. He calmly walks into the station takes something out of his pocket and decapitates the detective in one fell swoop. This scene would have made Harry even more dangerous than he already was, knowing that he was willing to commit such a rash and violent act even at a young age. Also, young Harry is played by Matt Smith. That means in this timeline that the Doctor grew up to be Voldemort. Number 5. Tex Richman – The Muppets the villains from the two most recent Muppets movie were called Tex Richman and Dominic Bad Guy, and if they ever make a third one, expect there to be a protagonist called something like Johnny Actually Hitler in Disguise. In the reboot film from 2011, Tex is a greedy oil tycoon who wants to buy up and close down the Muppets' theatre in order to get the liquid gold that lies underneath it. Now, This sounds like a pretty basic villain motivation, but a deleted scene adds another more human layer to Tex's scheme. A large part of Tex's musical number, Let's Talk About Me, was left out of the final version of the film. In an extended cut, however, the magnate reveals that the Muppets were actually performers at his 10th birthday party. Alas, Richmond suffers from a condition that renders him unable to laugh, which the other kids ridiculed him for. On that day, he swore vengeance on all of Muppet kind. A film like this did not need a more convoluted backstory for its antagonist, but it would have been nice to have a more fleshed out villain for our heroes to go up against. Plus, the full version of Let's Talk About Me is actually really good. Number 4. Nero – Star Trek From one soft reboot to another now, as this time we take a look at J.J. Abrams' first foray into the final frontier. The 2009 Star Trek movie was Abrams' attempt to revitalize the series, and his nerddom paid off big time as the film was so successful it spawned two sequels. Now, The baddie in the first movie is Nero, a Romulan played by Eric Banner. Now, Nero is from the future, having been sucked backwards through time by a supernova. He's already pretty upset that his home planet was destroyed by Spock's well-meaning plans, but scenes that were removed from the final film show that he has even more reason to be grumpy. When the Romulan then ship got caught in the black hole, it ended up in Klingon space. Nero and his people were held captive by the evil race, forced to toil in their minds until eventually they escaped. To say the Romulans had a rough go of it would be rather an understatement, and it makes total sense as to why they're so bent on revenge against Starfleet and why they were so willing to wait so long in order to get it. Number 3. Finn – Star Wars The Force Awakens J.J. Abrams, the undisputed king of cutting scenes from popular sci-fi movies beginning with the word star. Now, remember when everyone thought that John Boyega's character was going to be the main hero of the sequel trilogy? Ha <laughs> ha how we laugh now, eh? But when we first meet Finn, played by Boyega, he was nothing but a humble stormtrooper. He's part of an assault on Jakku that forms the opening of The Force Awakens, and where he gets a healthy dose of trauma after one of his squad mates gets blasted to death right in front of him. Another scene was filmed where Finn encountered a villager and her baby. After initially pointing his weapon at the pair, the trooper stands down and allows them to go free. It's a very human moment from the face grunt, because Boyega adds a lot to it with his frantic breathing and reluctant stance. Watching this would have really helped the audience double down on the whole this guy isn't actually evil thing. It would have also provided another instance of Finn actively refusing his mission statement, as well as showing him save a life in the middle of such a battle. Number 2. Boromir – The Lord of the Rings – The Two Towers Death count number 29 out of 5,647 here for Sean Bean, and as fans of Lord of the Rings, we all know that Boromir plays a key role in the first of Peter Jackson's flawless Lord of the Rings film trilogy. A member of the Fellowship of the Ring, Boromir accompanies Frodo, Sam, and everyone else to Mordor, but not before informing them that one does not simply walk there. And if you're Boromir, you don't even get close to that, as he got killed by some Uruk High in the first film's dramatic climax. This came after he attempted to take the ring from Frodo, having been tempted by its evil powers of persuasion. To the uninitiated, it appears as if Boromir's death was a result of his own greed and poor willpower. However, upon closer inspection, there may be other forces at play. In a sequence cut from the Two Towers, we see Boromir talking to his father Denethor. The steward of Gondor orders his son to join the Fellowship with the intention of securing the ring for his own means. We could have also included Faramir in this entry as well, as he gets a nice bit of backstory from this scene, but you know what, we're gonna pull a Denethor and just leave him out 
out entirely. Oh, sorry about that, mate. And number one, the Joker and Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad. According to the man himself, we'd all have been much bigger fans of Jared Leto's version of the Joker in 2016's Suicide Squad had so much of his stuff not been left out of the movie. These included scenes of him shooting up a restaurant, interrogating Captain Griggs, and emerging from the helicopter crash that was supposed to have killed him. And where the clown prince of crime goes, his loved up sidekick is never far behind. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn also suffered as a result of the cuts, as they chopped out giant parts of her transformation. A scene that was left out showed Harley chasing down the Joker's car on a motorcycle before committing her first kill in order to impress him. Leaving all of this footage on the cutting room floor helped condemn Suicide Squad to the fate that it suffered at the hands of critics and fans. We're not saying that these scenes would have saved it, I mean the second coming of Christ probably couldn't have done that, but we are saying that we might have enjoyed it a little bit more were we given any reason to care about so many of its characters. And there we go my friends, those were 10 deleted scenes that explain movie character backstories. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and you can check out all of the Warhammer miniatures that I've been painting up. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all of the best things in life, all right? Like love, happiness, and success, and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive, massive ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.